According to legend, Yukiona, the Snow Woman of Japan, appears during snowstorms, dressed in a white kimono and with long black hair. She lures travelers to their doom with her icy breath and her deadly touch. Some say that Yukiona is the spirit of a woman who died in the snow, seeking revenge on those who did not help her. Others believe that she is the embodiment of winter itself, a cruel and merciless force that preys on the living. To encounter Yukiona is to face your deepest fears. She will freeze you with a glance and make you feel the coldness of death itself. But beware, for she is not just a mindless monster. She can also be cunning and seductive, tempting you with the promises of warmth and shelter. Once you fall under her spell, there is no escape. Yukiona will claim your soul and add it to her icy collection. To this day, people in Japan still leave offerings to Yukiona, hoping to appease her wrath and avoid her deadly embrace. So, if you ever find yourself lost in a snowstorm, remember the legend of Yukiona. Stay vigilant and stay warm. For in the darkness of the winter, she is always watching. Kuchisakeona, which translates to slit-mouthed woman, is a Japanese urban legend that has haunted the country for decades. The legend tells of a beautiful woman who wore a surgical mask to cover her disfigured face, which was sliced open from ear to ear. She is said to appear to unsuspecting victims at night, asking them a simple question, Am I pretty? If the victim answers yes, she will reveal her disfigured face and asks the same question again. If the victim answers no, she will pull out a pair of scissors and kill them on the spot. But beware, even if you try to run, Kuchisakeona will always find you. She's said to be able to teleport and can even appear in your dreams. Some people claim that they have managed to escape her grasp, but they are forever traumatized by the experience. The origins of the legend are unknown, but some believe that it was inspired by a real-life incident involving a jealous samurai who mutilated his wife's face after accusing her of infidelity. To this day, people in Japan are still scared of encountering Kuchisake Ona. Parents warn their children to stay inside at night and to never answer yes or no when approached by a strange woman wearing a surgical mask. So if you ever find yourself walking alone at night in Japan, be careful who you speak to. You never know when Kuchisakeona may be lurking in the shadows, waiting to ask you the dreaded question, Am I pretty? Have you ever heard of the Gashadokuro? It's a giant skeleton from Japanese folklore. The Gashadokuro is formed from the bones of people who died in battle and were left unburied. The vengeful spirits of these soldiers come together to create a massive skeleton that is over 100 feet tall. Its eerie white bones glow in the darkness and its eyes burn with a malevolent red light. The Gashidokuro is said to wander the countryside at night, looking for victims to devour. Its massive jaws can swallow a person whole, and its long arms can crush a person's body in an instant. But that's not the scariest thing about this creature. The Gashidokuro is a master of stealth, and it can move silently through the night stalking its prey 
with cold, unfeeling eyes. If you hear the sound of bones rattling in the darkness, it may already be too late. The legend of the Gashadokuro has been passed down through generations of Japanese folklore, and it continues to inspire fear and fascination to this day. But where did the legend of the Gashadokuro come from? Some believe that it may have originated as a warning against the dangers of war. Others believe that it may have been inspired by real-life skeletal remains that were found in Japan. But whatever its origins, one thing is certain. The Gashadokuro is a creature of pure terror, and its very presence can freeze even the bravest of souls. Imagine walking down the dimly lit halls of a Japanese school, feeling an inexplicable sense of dread as you approach the bathroom. Some say that if you knock three times on the third stall and ask, Are you there, Hanako-san? She may answer. But beware, for once you summon her, there is no going back. Hanako-san is a ghostly figure that is said to haunt the bathrooms of old Japanese schools. Her origins are shrouded in mystery, but legend has it that she was a young girl who died tragically in the school's bathroom. Her spirit is said to still linger in the bathroom, waiting for unsuspecting students to enter. The legend of Hanako-san has been passed down from generation to generation and she is now a staple of Japanese horror folklore. Her appearance varies from person to person, but she is always depicted as a vengeful spirit seeking revenge for her untimely death. Some students have claimed that they've heard her cries for help echoing through the bathroom walls. Others have seen her ghostly figure lurking in the shadows. But what's even more terrifying is that those who summon her may never be the same again. Those who have encountered Hanako-san have reported feeling an overwhelming sense of dread and terror. Some have even claimed to have been physically attacked by her, with scratches and bruises appearing on their bodies. It's as if Hanako-san is trying to drag them down to the afterlife with her. Despite the risks, many students have dared to summon Hanako-san to prove her existence. Some have reported strange occurrences after summoning her, such as objects moving on their own and feeling a presence watching them in the dark as though Hanako-san's ghostly presence lingers long after the summoning ritual has ended. The legend of Hanako-san has become a cultural phenomenon in Japan, inspiring countless horror movies, TV shows, and manga but her origins remain a mystery, and her ghostly presence continues to haunt the imaginations of people all over the country. Teke Teke is the vengeful spirit of a young woman who fell onto the train tracks and was cut in half by a speeding train. It is said that she now haunts the train stations and alleys of Japan, dragging herself along the ground with her arms while emitting a chilling, scratching sound. Those who have encountered her claim that she's incredibly fast and impossible to outrun, as she drags herself along the ground with incredible speed. She is known for attacking people who cross her path, slicing them in half with a sharp scythe. There are many stories of people who have encountered Teke Teke, with some claiming that she appears as a beautiful woman, luring her victims into a false sense of security before revealing her true form. Others say that she appears as a twisted, contorted figure with a sinister grin on her face. Legend has it 
that if you hear the sound of Teke Teke's scratching, you must run as fast as you can in the opposite direction. Otherwise, you will be doomed to encounter her. Some say that the only way to escape her clutches is to find a way to remove yourself from her line of sight. However, even if you manage to escape her attack, it is said that the trauma of encountering Teke Teke can drive people insane leading them to a gruesome and untimely end. The legend of Teke Teke serves as a warning to those who wander the dark streets of Japan at night. Be careful, or you may just find yourself face to face with the terrifying, vengeful spirit of Teke Teke. Where the rugged terrain meets the endless horizon, and the night descends in profound darkness, there resides a creature that haunts the imagination of those who dare to tread its sacred grounds. This enigmatic being is more than a mere creature. It is a spectral guardian, a formidable embodiment of nature's fury fiercely protecting the secrets of the ancient land it roams. They call this creature the Yaoi. Legends whispered among the indigenous tribes speak of the Yaoi's eyes that glow like embers in the dark, and of its immense form that could crush bones with a single swipe. But there is more to the Yaoi than mere brutality. It is a being of ancient wisdom and deep resentment. Long ago, in a time where men were heedless of the natural world and its spirits, a group of explorers ventured deep into the heart of the Yaoi's domain. Ignoring the warnings of the indigenous people, they saw only an untamed wilderness ripe for conquest. And then, just as they were warned, some of the explorers were swallowed by the yawning silence of the outback. Their cries for help were absorbed by the vastness of the desert, and their faces contorted in terror as they realized they were not alone. The Yaoi had watched them from the shadows, its eyes burning with an otherworldly intelligence. As the moon hung low in the sky, casting eerie shadows upon the sand dunes, the remaining explorers stumbled upon a sacred site, a place where the Yaoi's power was at its peak. Ignorant of the land's sanctity, they desecrated the site, defying the very essence of the Yaoi. Enraged, the Yaoi emerged from the darkness, its immense form silhouetted against the night. Its howl echoed through the desert, a chilling lament for the violation of its domain. The intruders, now paralyzed with fear, realized the gravity of their actions. The Yaoi's wrath was swift and merciless. It pounced upon the intruders, its claws tearing through flesh and bone. Their screams joined the haunting chorus of the desert night a symphony of terror that resonated through the vast expanse. In the morning light, all that remained of the explorers were tattered shreds of clothing strewn across the desert like morbid confetti. The Yaoi had claimed its revenge, reminding humanity that the ancient spirits of the land were not to be trifled with. From that day forward, the story of the Yaoi's revenge swiftly circulated among the people of the land, capturing the imagination of all who hear it. Some say the Yaoi still continues to roam the outback, a shadowy figure in the depths of the night, a guardian of the land and a harbinger of doom for those who dare to challenge its wrath. In the desolate barrens of the Australian outback, 
A mysterious phenomenon haunts the darkness. The Min Min Lights. These spectral illuminations are not merely tricks of the eye. They are enigmatic entities, dancing on the edge of reality, leaving all who witness them in a state of awe and trepidation. Far from the reaches of civilization, a lone traveler found themselves wandering deep in the heart of the outback, captivated by the allure of the unknown. They had heard whispers of the Min Min Lights, tales spun by the indigenous people that spoke of ancient spirits guiding lost souls or mischievous entities leading wanderers astray. Unfazed by the warnings, the traveler pressed on, their curiosity overshadowing any sense of caution. One moonless night, as the desert was draped in an inky darkness, the traveler saw a distant glow on the horizon. Mesmerized, they followed the ethereal lights, their flickering dance drawing them further into the wilderness. With each step, the lights seemed to multiply, casting an eerie glow that illuminated the barren landscape. Unbeknownst to the traveler, the Min Min lights had sensed their presence, and they weaved their spectral dance to lure them deeper into the vast emptiness. The lights flickered and swirled, their movements hypnotic, their glow both beautiful and haunting. Lost in the mesmerizing display, the traveler failed to notice how far they had ventured from safety. The lights, once distant, were now surrounding them, their glow casting elongated shadows that danced on the sand dunes. A sudden chill filled the air, and an inexplicable sense of dread settled over them. It was then that the lights took on a malevolent hue their once enchanting dance turning sinister. They encircled the traveler, trapping them in their spectral web. The desert seemed to come alive with a myriad of whispers, voices carried by the wind, warning them to turn back before it was too late. But it was too late. With a flash, the lights converged, forming a blinding sphere of brilliance. The traveler cried out in terror as the lights enveloped them, swallowing them whole. The desert fell silent, the only remnants of their existence, the echo of their scream, and the lingering afterglow of the lights. The next morning, travelers passing through the same desolate stretch would speak of an inexplicable sorrow that hung in the air an intangible heaviness that seemed to seep from the very sand. The Min Min Lights had claimed another victim, adding one more tale to their dark legacy. The Monte Cristo Homestead is often considered to be one of Australia's most haunted locations. Situated in Juni, New South Wales, this historic mansion has gained a reputation for its eerie atmosphere and numerous ghostly encounters. Built in 1885 by Christopher William Crawley, Monte Cristo is a sprawling two-story Victorian-era mansion. It served as the Crawley family home for nearly 60 years before it was left abandoned for an extended period. During the family's time there, several tragic events occurred, adding to the property's mystique. Over the years, many visitors and paranormal investigators have reported strange occurrences within the mansion. One of the most famous stories involves the ghost of a young girl who tragically fell down the stairs and died. Visitors have claimed to hear the sound of a child's laughter or footsteps, even when there are no children present. 
Another prominent tale involves a maid who fell from the balcony under mysterious circumstances. It is said that her ghost roams the halls, and some have reported seeing her apparition or feeling a sudden drop in temperature when she is near. The former stable boy, Harold, is also said to haunt the premises. According to local legends, Harold was burned to death in his sleep by a stable hand. His spirit is believed to linger in the stables, and some visitors have reported feeling a strong sense of unease in that area. Apart from these specific ghostly encounters, many visitors have reported general feelings of being watched, cold spots, and objects moving on their own. These paranormal activities have contributed to Monte Cristo's reputation as one of the most haunted places in Australia. The Monte Cristo homestead is open to the public for guided tours. During these tours, visitors can learn about the history of the mansion and its former residents, as well as the numerous ghost stories associated with the property. Whether you are a skeptic or a believer, a visit to Monte Cristo offers a unique glimpse into Australia's supernatural folklore and a chance to explore the mysteries that surround this historic homestead. Deep within the mystical rainforests of far north Queensland, a chilling presence looms. The Quinkin. Whispers of this enigmatic entity echo through the dense foliage, their cadence akin to ghostly sighs that send shivers down the spines of those who dare to listen. The Quinkin, an embodiment of primal fear is an inscrutable specter that embodies the very essence of the supernatural. Its eyes, like twin orbs of malevolent obsidian, pierce the darkness, exuding an aura of dread that suffocates the rainforest. A silent guardian of forgotten secrets, it prowls the shadows. Its every step echoing through the eerie silence like a distant, ominous drumbeat. One fateful night, under the veil of an impenetrable darkness, a daring adventurer embarked on a research expedition. They were driven by an insatiable curiosity to unravel the secrets of the ancient Quinkin legend. Guided by a flickering lantern and the distant cries of unknown creatures, the adventurer ventured deeper into the heart of the rainforest, their senses overwhelmed by the oppressive energy that hung in the air like a curse. Unknown to them, the Quinkin, ancient and vengeful, sensed their presence, its eyes glowing with a malicious gleam that cut through the darkness. As the adventurer ventured further into the labyrinth of twisted trees and creeping vines, an eerie hush fell upon the rainforest. The nocturnal creatures fell silent, their usual symphony replaced by an unsettling void. Acknowledging the ancient entity that stalked its depths. Suddenly, the very shadows seemed to writhe with a life of their own coiling around the trees like serpents hungry for prey. The adventurer's lantern flickered violently, casting grotesque dancing shadows that seemed to mimic their every move. A sense of impending doom settled over them like a suffocating shroud as they felt the Quinkin's wicked gaze upon them, its spectral presence enveloping them like a vengeful spirit. At the core of the rainforest, the adventurer came face to face with the Quinkin. Its eyes glowed with an otherworldly spite, ancient malice radiating from its every pore. The Quinkin regarded them with a predatory hunger that sent terror coursing through their veins, 
paralyzing them with fear. The adventurer, overtaken by a primal dread, stood rooted to the spot, their very essence quivering with the weight of the Quinkin's wrath. The Quinkin, its voice a chilling whisper that slithered through the darkness, spoke to the adventurer in a language as old as the rainforest itself. It revealed the forbidden secrets of the land, tales of ancient spirits and curses that haunted the very soil beneath their feet. The adventurer, in that terrified moment, felt their sanity unravel, their mind becoming a vessel for the horrors that the rainforest concealed. As the first light of dawn stained the horizon a sickly shade of crimson, the Quinkin dissolved into the very shadows from which it emerged, leaving the adventurer in a state of utter desolation. They emerged from the rainforest, a shattered shell of their former self, their eyes haunted by the glow of the Quinkin, their soul forever tainted by the encounter. The legend of the Quinkin lives on, whispered among the rustling leaves and carried by the wind, a testament to the ancient terror that lurks within the heart of the rainforest. At the center of the Australian wetlands, there lurks a sinister force feared by all who have heard its name. Its legend, shrouded in darkness, tells of a creature that embodies the nightmares of the living, a creature that preys upon the reckless and the unwary, a creature known as the Bunyip. It is said that the Bunyip with its eyes gleaming like two sinister stars, emerges from the depths of the swamps when the night is at its darkest. Its presence is heralded by eerie sounds that echo through the wetlands, a mournful cry that chills the blood of those who hear it. The Bunyip is not just a creature, it is a curse, a curse that befalls those who disrespect the harmony of the land. In a small, isolated village, nestled by the water's edge, there lived a young man, brimming with arrogance and disbelief in the supernatural. He scoffed at the tales of the Bunyip, dismissing them as mere folklore, the product of superstitious minds. The man and his friends, driven by curiosity and bravado, ventured deep into the heart of the wetlands. They carried with them torches and laughter, oblivious to the darkness that awaited them. Ignoring the warnings of the village elders, they ventured further and further until they found themselves surrounded by the ominous silence of the swamp. Suddenly, the air grew thick with enmity. The water beneath their feet trembled, and the reeds rustled with unseen movement. Their bravado wavered, but it was too late to retreat. The Bunyip had sensed their intrusion and awakened from its slumber. Emerging from the depths, the Bunyip revealed itself, a grotesque amalgamation of various creatures with claws like daggers and a gaping maw that seemed to stretch endlessly. Its eyes glowing with a sickly malevolent light, reflecting the fear etched on the faces of the intruders. With a deafening roar, the Bunyip struck, swift and merciless. The man's friends screamed as they were snatched, one by one, pulled beneath the water's surface, their cries silenced by the unforgiving embrace of the swamp. The man, paralyzed by fear, watched in horror as his companions vanished into the murky depths. The Bunyip turned its gaze upon him, its eyes burning with an insatiable hunger. His heart pounded in his chest, his breaths shallow and desperate. In a moment of desperation, the man hurled his torch at the creature, illuminating its monstrous form. For a fleeting second, 
the bunyip recoiled, its grotesque features contorting in the flickering light. Seizing the opportunity, the man fled, his footsteps echoing through the wetlands like a drumbeat of terror. He returned to the village a broken man, haunted by the memory of that fateful night. The village mourned the loss of their children, the echoes of their screams lingering in the air like a curse. The man, once full of arrogance, now carried the weight of guilt and fear, his spirit forever scarred by the dark encounter with the bunyip. And so, the legend of the bunyip grew, its name whispered in hushed tones by the villagers as a reminder of the vengeful spirit that lurked in the wetlands. The darkness of the Australian wilderness hid its secrets well, leaving only the echoes of its malevolent roars as a warning to the curious and the disrespectful. A reminder that in the heart of the wilderness, the bunyip waits. A nightmare made real, ready to claim those who dare to challenge its wrath. The tale of the headless ghost of Taiwan is a chilling narrative born amidst the darkness of the late Qing dynasty. Here, political unrest and social turmoil provided the backdrop for an unearthly horror. In the cold grip of the 19th century, Taiwan lay under the oppressive rule of the Qing dynasty. In this oppressive era, a nameless dread took root. An innocent soul fell victim to a sinister plot, falsely accused, and left to face a twisted justice system. This execution was a grotesque mockery of fairness, a nightmarish portrait of sheer injustice. The headless ghost's nightmarish genesis can be traced back to the tortured souls of villagers who participated in or bore witness to this grisly execution. The legacy of horror began with the agonized cries of a spirit denied its peaceful rest. Amidst the moon's feeble glow, the headless ghost emerges, a horrifying embodiment of despair. Descriptions vary, but a spectral figure clutching its own severed head beneath an ethereal arm is a common sighting. Its haunting presence stalks the very ground where its unjust fate was sealed. Over the years, whispers of horror have echoed through the village streets. Those who dare walk these darkened paths report chilling encounters with the headless ghost, an embodiment of enduring anguish, a specter fueled by the rage of a bygone era. The legend of the headless ghost serves as a stark reminder, a nightmarish tableau of the injustices that can visit the innocent. It stands as a testament to the indomitable impact of historical trauma on a community's collective psyche. To this day, the villagers offer meager tokens and perform eerie rituals at the wretched site of this wrongful execution. These acts serve as a desperate plea to appease the tormented soul of the headless ghost, an act of penance for a terrible sin. The headless ghost of Taiwan is an embodiment of the torment of yesteryears, a spectral sentinel bearing witness to the cruelties of history. While the mere mention of its name may send shivers coursing down your spine, its factual origin serves as a chilling reminder of the enduring power of memory and the necessity of seeking justice, even for those beyond the yawning abyss of the grave.
in the haunted depths of Taiwan's folklore, where the boundaries of the living and the dead blur. We encounter the chilling specter known as the Little Ghost Girl. Beyond the veil of reality, the story of the Little Ghost Girl of Taiwan begins. A spectral narrative shrouded in mystery. Though a creature of folklore, her origins are deeply rooted in the cultural beliefs of the island. Taiwan's history is marked by periods of turbulence, and within this tumultuous saga lies the genesis of the little ghost girl. Legend tells of a tragic demise, a soul forever bound to the spectral realm. The apparition of the little ghost girl is a sight to freeze one's blood. A solitary figure, garbed in deathly white, her visage an eerie reflection of eternal sorrow. She drifts aimlessly through the veil of night, an embodiment of mourning. Her presence ushers forth an oppressive silence, a coldness that seeps into one's very soul. Those who chance upon her are greeted by the chilling specter, an eternal wanderer yearning for something forever beyond her grasp. Through the years, harrowing tales of encounters with the little ghost girl have been exchanged in hushed tones. Witnesses recount spectral visitations where a phantom figure emerges from the abyss, leaving behind an indelible mark of dread. The legend of the little ghost girl serves as a grim reminder of the relentless grip of sorrow and tragedy. Her presence, haunting the midnight hours, embodies the lamentations of the past, a relentless, ghostly echo. To this day, the people of Taiwan pay homage to the little ghost girl through offerings and obscure rituals. In doing so, they seek to quell the restless spirit of a lost child who lingers in the eerie borderlands between life and death. The little ghost girl of Taiwan stands as a symbol of unending despair and a relentless specter of memory. Her tale, though suffused with the darkest of terrors, reminds us that even in the most shadowed recesses of folklore, the lost shall forever linger. In the moonlit nights of Taiwan, a chilling specter roams. A creature known simply as the Jiang Shi. This ominous legend, shrouded in darkness and whispered fear, finds its origins in ancient beliefs and rituals. Beyond the realms of the living, the Jiang Shi emerges its history entwined with a macabre reality. The roots of this eerie legend stretch deep into the soil of Taiwanese culture, where it once lived as a tangible fear. Within the annals of history, the Jiangxi found its footing. This vampiric creature hopping with an otherworldly gait owes its existence to the pages of ancient texts and the beliefs of generations past. Cast aside your expectations of conventional vampires, for the Jiangxi hungers not for blood, but for the very essence of life. Its stiff, rigor mortis-ridden limbs grant it a grotesque, hopping mobility 
that sends shivers down the spine. A fate worse than death awaits those who were not granted a proper burial. The Jiangxi is said to arise when burial rites go awry, a malevolent revenant born of unfulfilled rituals. Superstition has yielded strange but necessary defenses against the Jiangxi. Doors and windows adorned with protective talismans, charms to ward off evil, and a steadfast belief in the creature's aversion to daylight. The Jiangxi, though a creature of yesteryears, refuses to fade into oblivion. The terror it instills continues to manifest in the realms of cinema, literature, and even modern day festivities. The Jiangxi persists as an enduring embodiment of Taiwan's supernatural heritage. Its chilling presence reminds us that even in the midst of folklore, reality can be far more terrifying than we dare to imagine. As we step back from the shadowy depths of the Jiangxi legend, let it serve as a haunting testament to the enigmatic power of folklore, where the myths and facts blur, leaving behind a legacy of nightmares that lingers long after the night has passed. In the depths of Taiwan's rich folklore, there lies a haunting urban legend that chills the heart. It is a tale of a spectral encounter, a story that continues to send shivers down the spines of those who dare to listen. It is the legend of the little girl in red. This unsettling legend originates from the densely forested mountains of Taiwan, a land steeped in mysticism and ancient secrets. It is said that in these remote woodlands, one may come across an apparition unlike any other. An innocent looking little girl dressed in a blood red outfit. But do not be deceived by her appearance, for this spectral child is far from ordinary. She is known to appear suddenly on isolated mountain roads, often in the dead of night, with an eerie, unearthly glow surrounding her. Travelers who have encountered her tell of an uncanny feeling, a sense that something is profoundly wrong. They say that as they approach the girl, their vehicles mysteriously stall, leaving them trapped in the darkness. And then the little girl does something that chills the soul to its core. She turns her head slowly, revealing her pale, ghostly face, and she beckons with an outstretched, bony finger. Some say she utters a soft, haunting melody that lures the curious closer. But those who heed her call and draw near may meet a gruesome fate. For legend has it that anyone who touches the little girl in red will be forever cursed, their life drained away leaving them as a mere shadow of their former selves. The origins of this eerie apparition remain shrouded in mystery. Some believe she is the vengeful spirit of a young girl who met a tragic end in these desolate woods. The little girl in red serves as a grim reminder of the mysteries that lurk in the dark corners of the world. Today, 
Travelers in the remote mountains of Taiwan speak in hushed whispers of their encounters with the spectral figure, and they caution others to tread carefully when venturing into the unknown. For the little girl in red may be watching, waiting, and beckoning to those who dare to explore the enigmatic depths of the Taiwanese wilderness. Beyond the Mortal Realm, the genesis of the Snake Woman of Taiwan unfurls. A nightmarish story veiled in obscurity. She is a creature conjured from the deepest fears. Her origins veiled in the inky darkness of folklore. The Snake Woman emerges as a fearsome entity notorious for her shape-shifting prowess and her bewitching allure. The ethereal manifestation of the Snake Woman often takes on the guise of an entrancing maiden, luring unsuspecting souls into her deadly embrace. Her beauty masks a grotesque truth, a serpentine body hidden beneath her cunning facade. Her deceptive song, akin to a siren's call, beckons those who hear it into her insidious grasp. Victims ensnared by her seductive wiles are met with a venomous bite and an insatiable thirst for their very life force. Over the eons, spine-chilling accounts of encounters with the Snake Woman have been whispered through the corridors of time. Witnesses recount dread-filled rendezvous with this sinister seductress, a living nightmare materializing in the inky depths of the night. The legend of the Snake Woman stands a stark reminder of the perils lurking beneath the surface of allure. Her spectral presence permeates the collective consciousness, an ever-present specter of temptation and doom. The Snake Woman of Taiwan remains a mysterious enchantress, a seductress of souls and a harbinger of terror. Her story, cloaked in the darkest of allurements, serves as a chilling reminder that within the realm of the supernatural, beauty often masks a malevolent abyss. Deep within the hauntingly beautiful expanse of Spirits Bay, a remote and desolate stretch of coastline on New Zealand's northern tip, a chilling legend whispered through the winds and waves. It was a tale of lost souls, shipwrecked and forever trapped between the realm of the living and the vastness of the ocean. Centuries ago, when explorers were still mapping the uncharted waters of these lands, a majestic ship named the Silver Seraph embarked on a voyage of great importance. Laden with treasures from distant lands, the ship sailed under the moonlit sky towards its unknown destiny. But fate is fickle, especially in the treacherous waters surrounding Spirits Bay. As the ship approached the bay's entrance, the weather took a sinister turn. Storm clouds gathered with a menacing fury, and the once placid waters transformed into a turbulent tempest. In the years that followed, villagers from nearby settlements 
began to report eerie sightings along the shores of Spirits Bay. In the twilight hours, when the moon cast an ethereal glow upon the waters, the ghostly forms of shipwrecked sailors would emerge from the sea's depth. Their spectral figures, clad in tattered uniforms of a bygone era, walked the beach with a mournful gaze fixed upon the distant horizon. Locals, brave and curious, attempted to communicate with these spectral wanderers, yet as they drew near, the ghosts would vanish, melting back into the waves like mist. Generations passed, and the legend persisted, passed down through stories told around flickering fires. Some believed that the ghosts sought to guide sailors away from the treacherous waters, a final act of goodwill from beyond the grave. Others believed they were a cautionary tale, a reminder of the sea's unpredictable nature. To this day, the beaches of Spirits Bay remain a place of both beauty and melancholy, where the moonlit waves whisper the tragic tale of the shipwrecked souls. Whether they roam to warn, to mourn, or to share their tale, the ghosts of Spirits Bay continue to be a haunting presence, a testament to the unforgiving power of the sea and the enduring spirits that linger in its depth. In the remote reaches of New Zealand's wilderness, where jagged peaks pierce the sky and ancient forests whisper with secrets, a tale of terror emerges. The story of the Puakai, a monstrous bird of prey that once cast a shadow of dread across the land. Legend has it that this avian behemoth had wings that spanned the heavens, casting a chilling shadow that fell upon villages below. Its feathers, dark as the abyss, rustled with a malevolence that sent shivers down the spines of all who beheld it. But it wasn't just the Puakai's awe-inspiring size that struck fear into the hearts of those who encountered it. It was its ravenous appetite for human flesh that haunted their nightmares. The story goes back to a time when the Maori people roamed the land, their lives intricately intertwined with the rhythms of the natural world. As they ventured into the wild, they were constantly on guard, for the Puakai was known to descend upon unsuspecting villages with an insatiable hunger for human prey. Terrified tales told of villagers huddled together, fires blazing in a futile attempt to ward off the winged terror. Children were cautioned never to wander too far from the safety of their homes, lest they become the next victims of the Puakai's voracious appetite. In the dead of night, cries for help pierced the darkness as the bird's enormous talons snatched away those who strayed too close to its lair. One brave warrior, driven by an unshakable determination to protect his people, set out on a perilous quest to confront the Puakai. Armed with a spear forged in the fires of resolve, he embarked on a harrowing journey into the heart of the wilderness. Deep within a forbidding forest, the warrior encountered the Puakai, its eyes gleaming with a sinister intelligence. But the outcome of this confrontation remains shrouded in mystery, lost to the annals of time. Even now, as you wander the breathtaking landscapes of New Zealand, remember the chilling tale of the Puakai. The mountains and the valleys may be tranquil, but their history echoes with the haunting cries of a creature that once ruled the skies. A creature that serves as both a cautionary tale 
and a testament to the indomitable spirit of those who face their deepest fears. In the remote heart of New Zealand's untamed wilderness, a chilling tale unfurls, one that speaks of elusive beings known as the Patupayarehe. These mythical creatures, ethereal and enchanting, inhabit the dense forests and mist-shrouded valleys, their presence hidden from all but the most intrepid souls. Long ago, the Patupayarehe thrived in harmony with nature's rhythm. They possessed a radiant beauty that captured the moon's glow and an otherworldly grace that mirrored the dance of the wind through the trees. Their songs, lilting and haunting, wove enchantments into the very fabric of the forests and their laughter echoed like the tinkling of distant bells. But these creatures were not to be taken lightly. They were protectors of their realm, fiercely guarding it from outsiders. Anyone who ventured too close to their hidden domains risked becoming entangled in their mystical web. Those who found themselves ensnared were often never seen again as if swallowed by the wilderness itself. Legends told of chance encounters where a solitary traveler, guided by a glimmering light or the haunting melody of a flute, stumbled upon a realm untouched by time. Here, the Patupayarehe danced in the moon's silver embrace, their laughter carrying on the breeze. Yet, no matter how tempting the invitation, those who dared step into their realm vanished without a trace, leaving behind only an eerie silence. Generations passed, and as human presence spread across New Zealand's landscapes, the Patupayarehe retreated deeper into the shadows. Their songs became whispers, their laughter became echoes, and their enchanting world melded with the realm of dreams. Some say that to this day, the Patupayarehe remain guardians of their realm, hidden from view, watching over the ancient forests and the wild places where they once thrived. So, as you wander through New Zealand's wilderness, remember the tale of the Patupayarehe. In the stillness of the forests and the shimmering moonlight, you might catch a glimpse of their ethereal forms. A reminder that even in the modern world, the enigmatic and the mystical still linger, just beyond our reach, waiting to be discovered by those willing to venture into the unknown. In the depths of New Zealand's wild and untamed landscapes, where mist-shrouded waters weave through ancient forests, there exists a tale of primal terror, the story of the Taniva. The Taniva, ancient and enigmatic, is a creature both feared and revered by the Maori people. It dwells in the hidden depths of lakes, rivers, and the coastal waters, and its form can be as elusive as the shifting shadows on a moonless night. Some say it resembles a massive serpent, while others describe it as a creature with a visage that defies human comprehension. When the Maori roamed these lands in harmony with nature, they knew to tread lightly and pay heed to the whispers of the Taniva. For this creature, though often regarded as a guardian of its watery realm, possessed a capricious nature that demanded respect. It could be a protector, guiding canoes safely through treacherous waters, or a malevolent force lurking beneath the surface 
to ensnare those who dared approach. One chilling tale tells of a coastal village that lived in the Taniva's shadows. It was a place where the waters ran deep and the forest seemed to whisper secrets of the past. The villagers spoke of eerie encounters and haunting sounds that echoed through the night. Mysterious disappearances were whispered about in hushed tones, but none dared to confront the malevolent presence that held sway over their lives. Yet, legends also spoke of a brave warrior, blessed with extraordinary courage and wisdom, who dared to defy the Taniva. Armed with ancestral knowledge and an unshakable resolve, he embarked on a treacherous journey into the heart of the creature's watery lair. What transpired deep within the inky depths of the Taniva's domain remains shrouded in mystery, known only to those who witnessed the battle between man and beast. Today, the legend of the Taniva serves as a chilling reminder of the untamed forces that once held sway over these lands. As you venture into the remote and pristine landscapes of New Zealand, remember the whispers of the Taniva, for the waters may conceal more than meets the eye, and the primal fears of ancient legends may still linger in the depths. In the rugged landscapes of New Zealand's Otago region, where golden dreams once lured treasure seekers from all corners of the world, a haunting legend takes root. The tale of the haunted Otago gold fields. During the 19th century, the Otago gold rush turned this once remote corner of the world into a bustling hub of activity. Miners flocked to the region, hoping to strike it rich and carve out a new life. But as the dust settled and the glimmer of gold began to fade, something else took hold of the land. Whispers of ghostly encounters, eerie apparitions, and unexplained phenomena. In the ghostly light of the moon, Abandoned mining settlements come alive with stories of spectral figures that refuse to rest. The wind carries their mournful echoes, faint sounds of pickaxes and shovels still toiling in the darkness. Among the tales that shroud the Otago goldfields in mystery, the legend of the lost miner stands out. It's said that a solitary miner driven to badness by his fruitless pursuit of gold, vanished without a trace. Now, his phantom wanders the lonely landscape, forever searching of the precious metal that eluded him in life. Some say his anguished cries can be heard on stormy nights, carried by the wind as a haunting reminder of the obsession that consumed him. As the years passed, these stories became intertwined with the very fabric of Otago's history. The abandoned buildings and equipment, remnants of the Gold Rush era, stand as silent witnesses to the past, lending an air of desolate beauty to the haunted landscapes. Today, as you explore the Otago goldfields, listen closely, for the wind carries the echoes of those who once sought fortune and found only sorrow. The legends of the haunted Otago goldfields remind us that the past never truly vanishes, and the spirits of the past continue to wander, leaving their mark on the present and weaving a haunting tapestry of history and mystery. <laughs>